Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Romans chapter 12, but before we get started, I wanted to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Romans chapter 12. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with, the, with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophecy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and take delight in honoring each other. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hosp hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Amen. So what did you think of Romans chapter 12? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, I love Romans chapter 12. It's such a great chapter. Um, it's talking about being a living sacrifice to God. And, you know, that comes as kind of a surprise to a lot of people. And it's not always easy to embody when you're um, first starting out in your, you know, Christian journey. Giving up the, the, the customs of this world, it says... Um, do not copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And that is such a bold statement and it's so hard. Well, it doesn't have to be hard. We have to trust God, but just being real, it's hard for a lot of people. And I feel like that's why a lot of people 
turn from God. They don't stay, um, you know, on fire for God because it's hard to let go of the customs and the behaviors of this world that we that have become so ingrained in us. You know, a lot of us haven't been to church you know when we were we were kids we weren't raised in the church we weren't raised around like good christian people and we don't have that solid foundation so it's hard to take things that you've known for years and you know let go of them but it's easy with christ so the key is is allowing god to transform you so it says let god transform you don't resist the the transformation that god is trying to work within you offer yourself up to him to be transformed you know when you feel that tug of resistance to say no you know i want to go do this even though god is calling you to do something else we have to say god you know, help me to change my mind in this situation. My mind wants me to go do, wants to go do this, you know, in the world, but I know that you want me to go do this. So help change my mind, help make my desire your desire. And you will see that God will transform you. He will change your heart and your mind. He will change the way you think and, and make you into a new person. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And, and then it says, don't think you are better than you really are. Realize that everything, all the changes that are taking place in your life and, and the good things that are happening for you are all because of God. They're all His grace, His mercy, His favor. Um, it's all from him it's because that you have christ living in you that you're able to love your enemies that you're able to have find joy in your circumstances that you're able to um, please god in any way because of christ and we have to remember that it's not by our own good works but it's because we have christ living within us um and then it says in his grace god has given us different gifts for doing certain things well and i think it's so important that we don't compare ourselves to other people that we ask god to shine a light on what our personal gifts are and then whatever that gift is do it well and you know until you figure out what your gift is do everything that you can you know to the best of your ability you know give it your all everything that god has laid out before you and just ask god to help you with that you know if you're feeling you know unproductive or you know not disciplined ask god to help you be more disciplined or be more productive if you're feeling that um, you're just you know falling short in a certain area ask God to you know um, show up in your weaknesses because that's where God shines the most in our weaknesses so if we seek God in those moments he will help you it, we just have to allow him to we have to turn to him in every situation and so we just want to ask him what are your gifts are you a teacher are you a leader are you are you good at serving? Um, are you um, prophesying? You know, whatever that gift is. Um, if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. So do whatever it is God has laid out before you with a with an open heart and gladly, a willing heart. Um, and it says, don't just pretend to love others, but really love them. And that hit home to me because. It's something that I still struggle with. I still struggle with truly loving my enemies. And when I say loving, I don't mean that I can do nice things for anyone. You know, even if I don't really like them, I can still do nice things for them. I can still be kind to them and show them the same love that I would show someone else. The hard part is in my heart. So in my heart, I'm still thinking about how they hurt me or, um, you know, I'm still just you know, feeling guarded from them. And, you know, that's where I really have to seek God. So when I start feeling those emotions, that's when I need to take it to God and say, hey, God, I know this is just my flesh feeling hurt and feeling wounded. Heal these wounds. Heal my broken heart. And and God will heal you. He will soften your heart so that you don't even have to think of it. He will bless you so much that you'll be so blessed that you won't even have to um, worry about how those people hurt you in the past. And, and that's what's so amazing that God can do that for you if you just offer to him you know where we are falling short or where we are weak God just wants you to turn to him and he wants you to allow him to help you he can help you it's like do you want to be healed then come to me you know get up and, sh and show me where you are hurting so then it says, really love them, hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good, love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. So make sure you're honoring people every day. Like how are you 
honoring those around you, you know, the people that you work with, the people you go to school with, you know, the people in your neighborhood, how are you honoring them? And it's something that, again, you may have to pray on for a while. You know, it may take years for you to get to a place where you really feel like you can genuinely love and honor everyone. Um, so just give yourself some grace. And it says, rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. So when trouble hits, be patient, trust in God, and keep on praying through the trouble. Whatever is, 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 is confronting you in that moment, take it to God and, 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 and lay it at his feet. And allow him the opportunity to do something with it. And wait expectantly. Say, God, I'm laying this at your feet. And I can't wait to see what you're going to do with it. I can't wait to see how you're going to turn it around. I can't wait to see the changes in that you're going to make within me. And, and just be grateful for it. Thank you for making these changes within me. Thank you for fixing this situation. Um, make sure you're showing your gratitude. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. And that's, you know, praying that God will bless them. A lot of people find that like, what do you mean pray that they'll, God will bless them? Well, God often blesses people first by um, opening their eyes to what they're doing wrong. And that might not always be a pleasant or comfortable situation to be in. I'm sure some of you have experienced it yourself. I know I have. God has opened my eyes to a lot of the wrong that I've done and a lot of my sin. And that wasn't very comfortable at first. But after that, um, after I was able to lay that at God's feet, he turned it around for me and he's given me such joy and I'd much rather see my enemies blessed by God and come to Christ and live a completely new life and be a new person than for God to just punish them and leave them, you know, wasting away in the dust. Um, so it says, don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. So don't be so caught up in your religion or in your Christianity or in your goodness, your godliness, your holiness, that you can't be around people who are still suffering. You know, we are supposed to be there for the people that are suffering still and, and be that light that shines on their darkness, that leads them to Christ. Um, never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Um, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. And I think that's so important that we try our best to live in peace with everyone. And part of that comes with forgiving people who hurt us. It's admitting and, you know, admitting when we have done something wrong and seeking forgiveness from other people and just thinking about, hey, how will this make this other person feel? Or after you've done something, if the Holy Spirit puts it on your heart that, hey, that might not have been the right thing to do, then you can go to that person and apologize. It's it's pretty simple to do your best to living at peace with everyone. If you know that something bothers you, don't do it to somebody else. You know, some of these things seem so simple, but we get so wrapped up in ourselves and in the world that we stop thinking about other people and what they're going through and how they may be feeling. So we just need to start, you know, staying present in the moment and just asking God to convict us. Like, don't, you know, God, let me know when I'm doing something that that may be bothering of somebody else. You know, let me know when I'm doing something like I remember when I first moved into my apartment, I used to play my music super loud because I just enjoyed like drowning out the enemy and, you know, just enjoy just, you know, um, getting into the into the music. And um then it occurred to me that, hey, I wonder if my neighbors can hear this. Like, maybe this isn't so nice to have my music up so loud that they can hear it too. So, you know, the Holy Spirit let me know that. And then I was able to change my behavior. So now I put an earbud so I can listen to it just as loud. And sometimes it's even way louder because it's actually in my ear. And, um, you know, I don't have to worry about bothering anyone. So, you know, sometimes being at peace with everyone involves compromise and it just involves seeking God in that situation to say, hey, God, you know, what can I do to make this situation right? Um, so it says, don't let evil, evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. And this statement just really, um, you know, hits home for me because in so many instances, when I'm feeling bullied, when I'm feeling tormented or mocked, my first instinct is to lash back out. Like you hurt me. I want to hurt you too. You know, that used to be how I used to react or I would just, you know, hold it all in until one day I exploded on just the, that one person. They might not even have done something that 
wrong to me, but I exploded on that one and it just, it, it was a, I was a ticking time bomb, you know, cause I was trying to hold it all in or I was just reacting back. Someone said something mean to me, I'd say something mean back. If somebody said something that hurt me, I'd say something that hurt them back. Um, you know, so now I'm really trying to focus on this. So when I feel the evil, when I feel the enemy threatening me, when I'm triggered by something that somebody says or does, I try to seek God in that moment. So I'm feeling triggered. I say, God, I know I'm not supposed to be feeling like this right now. You know, here, God, I'm handing it to you. How can I make good in this situation? So God has shown me, you know, immediately start praying for that person. Um, you know, start saying prayers, asking God to bless them. You know, it says, it says, um, don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. You know, so it's that simple. You know, conquer evil by doing good and God will bless you abundantly for it. So that is my interpretation of Romans chapter 12. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope you stay blessed, stay in God's presence, and have a great rest of your day. I love you.